as a recap to a long ago, too long ago, published first part to this video, I had some major work done in my shop at home and, and couldn't use my saws for a while and uh, got to itching. And when the opportunity came up to use the uh, Center for Wooden Boats Cama Beach shop um, to do something, I decided I might as well make a paddle. And so I went wood shopping and I bought some cherry and some ash and I decided to make a steering paddle. Um, you know, just a big broad thing for, uh, for shallow lakes and just, you know, like picnic canoeing. Although not the lightest thing in the whole world, um, it did stick true to my initial design. But after using it the first time to actually paddle with, it was probably a better uh, pizza peel than a paddle. Those, uh, it was just so broad. Uh, it, I mean, hurt my shoulders. So I decided to... Um, to modify it a little bit and I took uh, one of my uh, one of my paddles that I use all the time and used it as a little bit of a pattern to, to cut it down while still keeping it as a big broad shallow steering paddle. And after rough cutting it to the finished dimensions I actually then turned to my friend the belt sander and uh, went ahead and took care of both uh, the edges um, and uh, some of the bulk actually took a little bit of of the meat off the paddle to lighten it up and it, it it's considerably lighter um, don't tell my wife but I couldn't find my shop apron and I stole her kitchen apron Shh, don't tell it's it's gotten dark on me I got started a little late on this sort of halfway project um, I have slimmed this paddle down by almost a pound and um, as you can see I took some of the bulb off I reshaped it both on um, the heel and the toe um, I did slim up the handle just a little bit I had some bumps left from the from the bandsaw um, at the uh, Center for Wooden Boats when I used their shop that I never to my own satisfaction got out so I did that, I got all those out, and then I slimmed up and reshaped the handle just a little bit. Now, this isn't, I like a big chunky handle. Remember, this is a steering paddle, so I need, I need to be able to have some force on it. So I want that nice big chunky paddle. I don't need to drop my thumb over just as long as I'm, I'm there, I'm good. And yeah, so I'm going to hit this with um, some 110 and uh, maybe some 220 and then I'm going to cover it again with silver tip epoxy. Uh, one, maybe two coats of it, and then I'll put some exterior Man of War spar varnish on it. And I'll take you through that whole process next. All right. Red Solo cups are useful for many things. Aside from drinking in college and playing beer pong, they're also great for mixing epoxy. So one of the nice things with this epoxy, it's, it's a two to one. And I can do that with um, solo cups. So I found these a few years ago. They're like shot glass cups for for doing jello shots. But they're great for just single use epoxy. So I can go two of these, eh, eh, one of these, and then I take a chopstick um, that I have liberated from any number of takeout places and mix it up and we're good to go. I know there's going to be some comments about me using a cheap shitty brush that leaves really bad streaks and, and throws bristles. Uh, I like these. I like these for epoxy. Remember the silver tip flows and so any brush marks automatically go away. And then I have taken about ooh, four minutes of time and sat there and just pulled and tugged and rubbed on this until um, I'm fairly sure that I've gotten most of the stragglers out. Uh, and it's nice because after you use it, you just throw it away. So, thankfully, silver tip is not super noxious and you don't have to have a vent hood. Really, the only precaution is to wear gloves when you're working with it. Um, don't touch your eyes and uh, make sure you do it in a warm room. I'm taking any leftover epoxy from the paddle coats and I am mashing it into this this solo cup with some alder shavings I have from a former lathe project. I got a whole bag of them. And one of my planes needs a new foregrip, and so I'm gonna make the foregrip out of the epoxy and the shavings. 
So this one's full, and I went ahead and topped it off with uh, a little bit of the liquid epoxy. Um, I'm gonna leave them outside on the bricks to uh, to dry. Uh, they're real hot. Epoxy gets hot as it cures, and um, I I don't want to be that guy whose shop burned down because because uh, he had epoxy in a cup. Spin my paddles from the ceiling um, via this. Uh, this sweet rope and uh, I'm always afraid somebody's gonna come in as I'm as I'm getting it down because it's usually just I mean it's always tied up there but the thought is you know when I I'm as I'm pulling it down I'm on a step stool somebody's gonna walk in and I'm gonna get put on a suicide watch or something um, but no that is uh, the the old rope was just what I've had for a few years and it's what I used to suspend paddles with um, again, this pedal, like all of mine, um, I'm just going to here, um, not all the way up to the grip with, uh, with finish, and then I'll oil from the grip up. Um, I guess I'm a fanboy uh, slash sheep, and listen to the wisdom of, uh, of oiling the handle. I know other people don't. They just finish the handle, and they don't get blisters, but this is the way that um, I was taught, and this is the way I've always done it, so this is how I do it. In my experience, it takes a couple coats of the silver tip and then a couple coats of varnish as well for a really nice long lasting outdoor use paddle. Now, if you're just going to be a wall hanger inside, you don't have to use the varnish, but if it's going to be in the sunlight at all, you're, you're going to want to varnish it. So here's the first coat. Um, make sure you have some newspaper or something down. I actually have this piece that I'm working on now, and that's just the back, so it's fine. You don't want dripped epoxy on your uh, on your shop or your garage floor. And excuse the mess, I'm mid-project. I know that's shocking. Here we go. I went ahead and applied the second and final coat of the silver tip epoxy. I uh, tip the brush out uh, fairly well so it should be nice and smooth and then I'll hit it with some 220 and some 400 before I start with uh, with the varnish but the epoxy will make the edges really nice and hard and keep everything together um, I plan to uh, get probably a lifetime of use out of this uh, the steering paddle it's not light it's uh, it's cherry and ash but uh, it is uh it's gonna be tougher than a coffin nail absolutely so i've sanded this down with a 120 and then a 220 uh, for the preparation of getting the first coat of this marine spar varnish on So I have three paddles hanging and swinging and drying. I feel like I have accomplished something today. Maybe. So we're going to let them dry overnight and give it a nice little scuff with some steel wool and put another coat on and then repeat as necessary. This is the results of the second coat of the satin spar varnish. Really like how this is turning out. Um, I'm going to put one more coat on. Just just cause but yeah really like how that turned out in addition to this paddle today that's getting varnished it is paddle day here I'm actually uh, varnishing any number of paddles that I'm building and rebuilding right now I ease this joint just a little bit with uh, some 220 sandpaper and I'm gonna gonna oil the handle it's been about a week 
since uh, I put the last coat of varnish on and I'm gonna use my favorite oil um, for for boats um, and it's a uh, Corey's amazing tongue oil and you get this from like spirit line kayaks uh, it's great shit. It's it's tongue oil with some citrus um, Something or other in it and uh, it just it cuts through and it just sticks and it builds nicely and it just stays uh, What I really like to do is take and when I finish a paddle just like dunk it in and let it soak um, in the tongue oil for um, 10 or 15 minutes uh, but my uh, my supply is getting getting fairly low so uh I'm, I'm gonna wipe it on um, and give it two or three good coats, but I actually need to order some more and I'll put the link to this down in the in the video It really is good stuff for any any sort of oiling you're gonna do on a boat or a canoe or a kayak First nice thick thick coat put on I'm gonna let it soak into the to the ingrain um, and uh, and the rest of the wood now uh, this kind of gives a yellow um, once it's built up nicely. It's just like the varnish. Now there will be a little bit of a difference um, in the in the finish, but it'll be super comfortable um, in in the hand when paddling, and it'll be nice and protected from the elements. Everybody has at least one coat of Corys on. Fast forward about three months and we actually get a chance to get to a lake and put the paddles in the water and turn ourselves into a Subaru commercial. There's a lake near the house that is crystal clear and calm, about 40 acres and perfect for testing out new paddles and new boats. After my wife and I spent the morning poking around the lake, just hanging out and uh, enjoying enjoying nature, um, I took the uh, the paddle out with the, with the canoe just to see how it performs solo, um, J strokes, and just moving a bunch of water. And uh, yeah, really really happy how it turned out, um, both uh, both performance wise and aesthetically. It's not a white water paddle, but um, it's really, really nice for, for this sort of lake and condition.